everyone. Kyle with Andrew Hilton. And this is Mike. Mike. Uh, we have been tempting you, taunting you with the idea of bringing back cantankerous cocktails for a live episode, and eh, finally we just got around to it. So, we are going to be doing four cocktails for you tonight, uh, using three or four ingredients pretty much always in common. Uh, we're Almost all of our cocktails are either going to use Campari or Red Vermouth, I think. Do we have Red Vermouth in literally everything? Uh, I believe so. I think we do, yeah. Um, but we're going to be focusing a little bit on cocktails made with bourbon. Could also be made with rye, but we're going to make a Manhattan, as well as a Boulevardier cocktail. Uh, with gin, we are going to make a classic Negroni. Uh, and then finally, we are just going to do a little bit of a light kind of red vermouth and Campari cocktail with a little bit of soda water, uh, which is one of my personal favorite cocktails, a really underappreciated one called the Americano. Now, you're going to get three ounces each of Campari and bourbon. You're going to get a full four ounces of red vermouth. Then you're getting an ounce each of some absolutely fantastic Riesling-based white dry vermouth as well as some gin. Uh, and we are going to make four full cocktails out of this with you folks. We're going to do the whole cocktail kit for $35, which is about what we do a scotch tasting for, which you get four little one ounce bottles, you get a lot more with this one. So we're really pleased with that. Uh, we are going to recommend that you folks at home have ice, a navel orange, and some maraschino cherries to hand. And I promise when it's not the promo, Mike's actually going to say something. It'll be very exciting. We'll see. Yeah. That's about what I thought. Uh, all that and more coming up uh, Friday, June the 4th, I believe. I sure hope it's the 4th, otherwise we have to reshoot the whole damn promo. Uh, looking forward to seeing you out for that. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our very first live Cantankerous Cocktails. Now, we did do a pre-recorded one of these before. It's our very first time doing it live. Uh, I'm Kyle with Andrew Hilton, and this is Mike. Mike, how are you? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. A little nervous. A little, uh, yeah. A little just, nervous. Just, just a little bit. But uh, you're kind of the impetus for this. Like, you make a lot of cocktails at home where I don't. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about kind of the cocktail culture that you kind of created at home with you and Sol and the cocktails you make? Uh, I, I don't know if I'd call it a cocktail culture. We just, we like to make drinks. We like different things. Um, uh, I'm typically like beer and whiskey. Uh, uh, my wife likes... Uh, more of the cocktails. Martinis is pretty much where it started. I've never liked a martini until I learned how to make them proper. Uh, ingredients matter. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later today. Um, but that's just it. I, li I like to create things. I like flavors. I like to change things up. Um, I like to experiment. And here we are. Beautiful. Uh, now we do have some barware out here that I probably should have put in the promo, but I will kind of simplify this for everybody. You do not need a Hawthorne strainer. Um, literally just pour carefully and you'll be fine. If you do have one, great, grab it now. Uh, we're going to be using uh, the bottom halves of a shaker uh, as basically a stirring vessel. If you've got a tall pint glass that you can fill full of ice, you've basically got the exact same thing. Uh, we have really fancy cocktail spoons. Anything that's a long-handled spoon, basically that is an ice cream scoop, will do the exact same job. Uh, other than that, we have ice, we have maraschino cherries, and we have bits of orange, plus a little bit of mix that we'll get to later. Uh, now the premise of the evening is that one of us will be making the classic cocktail that you'll be making at home and then one of us will be kind of riffing on that and deciding hey you know here's what the classic is but here's how you maybe you can change it up because the big thing we want to talk about tonight is creativity we're starting with the base recipe the classic that everybody knows and then we're building on that we're changing it up uh, and i think you'll see that probably with the very first cocktail is the one we have the most variations of and that's going to be the manhattan cocktail now for the manhattan cocktail you're going to need your bourbon you are going to be needing your sweet and your dry vermouth. I don't know why I'm showing you the bottles, because all of yours are little clear sample bottles. So the bottle shapes don't actually matter in the slightest to you. Uh, but yes, it is bourbon, sweet, and dry vermouth. Mike, take us into your classic perfect Manhattan. Okay, uh, just quickly in regards to this, I use a fork at home most of the time. In fact, today I will be using this for the very first time. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, uh, Manhattans. Uh, we're starting off, uh, as Kyle said, uh, Manhattan is maybe the most diverse cocktail that we're doing today. So although we're not doing the classic, we're going to start off with the perfect, because why wouldn't you start with perfection? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, swab my tongs. So you want to start with your glass and, uh, sorry, not your glass, your mixer. Because um, this is one of the few that are going to be strained. Throw a little bit of ice into your vessel. Pretty simple. And we'll pull out our bourbon. And we will start with one and a half ounces. Now we are over using an overproof bourbon, which I do recommend, just because we are going to be diluting it with ice, which is of course going to melt into water. So one and a half ounces of bourbon is going to be just right at 40, 46%. But if we use a slightly overproof one, it actually just shows up a little bit better and holds up a little bit better. Okay, and as far as the vermouth, so we're using equal parts sweet and dry. Um, for simplicity's sake, I wrote up the recipe as a half ounce. Um, Technically speaking, you want to use two teaspoons of each. Um, we're talking about a difference of three milliliters, four, four milliliters. milliliters. Yeah. Um, so for simplicity's sake, half an ounce. Uh, if you have a teaspoon handy, it's two teaspoons of each. So we've got all of our ingredients in our mixer. Thank you. You're welcome. Grab our little spoon. You just want to shake it up. That's the reason we're not shaking this. There's a reason we're stirring or sorry, it. Mix it up. Uh, sorry, Don and Karen, we are using two teaspoons or half an ounce each of the dry vermouth, the Taza Estate Riesling vermouth, uh, as well as two teaspoons or half an ounce of the uh, Carpano Antica Formula red vermouth. So it is an ounce and a half of the bourbon, half an ounce each or two teaspoons each of the sweet and the dry vermouth to make a perfect Manhattan. A classic Manhattan would be uh, a full ounce of the red vermouth, which I think is actually too much because I find Manhattan's very sweet, but we'll get to that when we get start talking about variations. Mike. Okay. In our glass, the cocktail glass that we'll be pouring everything in, shouldn't have done that. One or two maraschino cherries. It's kind of a preference thing. We have stirred everything up and we use our lovely little strainer and just pour it all on top, leave all the ice out. Oh, no, there's a perfect Manhattan. Yeah, there we are. I'm gonna take a little pull out of yours before you sip on it. Okay, Karen wants us to start over. Um, I am actually going to make a variation, so when I make it, I will talk about what the classic is and what I'm doing slightly different. How's that treating you, Mike? Perfect. Beautiful. It's in the name. Well, it should be, yes. <laughs> uh, so, I'm going to make a slight variation. So, while I enjoy a Manhattan, and indeed a perfect Manhattan, which is a touch drier, I actually find Manhattans, on the whole, too sweet. So, I'm going to make my variation of a Manhattan, which, if you're going to tell me is really, really close to a Boulevardier, you're not wrong, but also shut up. So I'm starting with my ounce and a half of bourbon, going straight into my mixing glass. Now, I would generally point out that one of the classic ingredients in a Manhattan is Angostura bitters. Uh, we actually tried, we called the Angostura folks to try and get like little tiny sampler bottles of Angostura for you. They didn't have any to give us, so unfortunately I could not package bitters in. So I'm going to give myself one quick uh, drop of Angostura. And here's where I'm going to change mine up a little bit. I find all vermouth just a little sweet. And yes, me, the Riesling freak, is saying no to the Riesling-based vermouth. And I'm actually going to go ahead and use a dry sherry. This is the Legita Manzanilla. Uh, so whereas for Mike's version, he was using half an ounce of dry vermouth, I'm going to use half an ounce of dry sherry which is like vermouth, but even drier and doesn't have the herbs and spices. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and really change things up and go with one of the things that is never not in my liquor cabinet, punti mess. Punti mess means point and a half. It's basically two thirds red vermouth to one third eh, their version of Campari. And I'm gonna go with half an ounce of that as a bit of a variant. Just gonna drop that in there and I'll give it a really good stir. Now I am, of course, going to throw a maraschino cherry in there. Not because I particularly like maraschino cherries, but because it is classic. Give mine a real nice strain. 
Now, there are Negronis that can be, or pardon me, Negronis, there are Manhattans that can be served on the rocks. Uh, I like it just well stirred and then served neat. So, color difference. I think mine's maybe a shade darker with the Carpano, and that's just a difference in the vermouths. Go ahead and give yourself a sample of mine with the straw there. See what you think, difference-wise. It's definitely got more bitter. Yeah. And that's just it. I and find... Nice, I do find Manhattan just a little too sweet. Now, while we enjoy these, uh, why don't you tell us about some of the variations that we may not, so not necessarily be making tonight, uh, but that you make at home. Okay. Um, so again, Manhattan's maybe one of the vers most versatile cocktail. Um, so you, you've had a you've had a perfect that we made today. Um, ideally, you've had it already. Uh, if not, I mean, basically, is the Manhattan too sweet for you? You're gonna make something like this. If if it's too dry, you can change that up as well. Um, stuff that I like to use at home rather than using uh, the sweet vermouth, which is sweet, but I like to use stuff like this. Um, Recent discovery, I can't even tell you what this is. Can it's you a nocino. That? Yeah, it's a hazelnut, or pardon me, a walnut liqueur from northern Italy. And it's a raw, uh, they're unripened nuts yes. uh, in this particular thing. So it's like a bitter black walnut carrot. But, it, but it's really sweet. So I would take the same recipe of a regular Manhattan, but I will use something like this uh, instead of uh, the sweet vermouth. Um, and I stumbled across that. Uh, I was looking through a recipe book and I had some apricot brandy and there's a, there is a, a classic drink that's called the Jimmy Lopez. I have no idea who Jimmy Lopez is, no, but I... he liked apricot brandy in his Manhattans. Um, and that's sort of where this idea came from. Uh, I ran out of apricot brandy, wanted something else sweet. Uh, uh, I had some cinnamon bourbon that I made over Christmas and I was making Manhattans out of that and thought that vanilla would work really well with that. And I had some Nevan, which is a vanilla cognac. Which they don't even make anymore, which I, is a shame. It, it is a shame, because it is so good. Um, but I basically polished, Grand Marnier vanilla, which is exactly what Polished off my Nevan with uh, making Manhattans uh, with that for the longest time, and then stumbled across this. The idea with the Manhattan is that it's perfect to you. Uh, if it's too dry, change it up uh, with some sweet stuff. If it's too sweet, change it up with some dry stuff or leave out some of the sweet stuff. Um, the Manhattan can be perfect for you no matter how you make it. And, yeah. and that's essentially it. It's, it's, it's great to experiment with Manhattan because it's so classic and easy. One thing I will say is um, we've got these maraschino cherries, but of course they're not real maraschino cherries from Italy. They're these god-awful formaldehyde grocery store confections that taste like pink nightmares. Um, if you want to actually add a real maraschino taste to your Manhattan, uh, you don't even have to add a cherry. Um, maraschino cherries are named for maraschino liqueur, not the other way around. So you could actually float half a bar spoon of maraschino liqueur on top of your Manhattan to give you that maraschino character. It'll be a prettier aroma than just putting in the piece of offensive fruit. Um, and will you dump that for me? I'm yeah, sort kind of at the point of the end of that. Uh, any questions about Manhattan as we get ready to move on to the next drink? Ah, uh, the 10 second tape delay before I don't know if we have questions until ah. 10 seconds later. Gives me, it's, it's gives me a chance to clean a glass. That's true. Or rinse a glass. Devin says slow down. Well, we can definitely slow down. Well, we... We all need time to make our drink, or drink our drink. That's true. I'm going to just step behind you and dump mine now and all that sort of thing. You want a Manhattan, Donnie? Yes, please. Do you want Mike's version or do you want my version? Sweet or dry? Uh, I'll go sweet. That's Mike's then. Sweet uh, perfect or sweet variation? Uh, sweet perfect. Done. Well, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I think Manhattan, I, I mean, I struggle to think about Manhattans without thinking about the Simpsons episode where Bart gets roped in by the mob to make the Manhattans. Um, and then they end up selling rat milk. Um, that's a strange bloody episode. But yeah, it's one of those classic American cocktails that uh, even beyond the variations we're doing, um, a lot of people will tell you that we're doing this entirely wrong, that you should be making it with American rye, not bourbon. Uh, you can make it with an American whiskey, which would be a blend of corn and rye and wheat and potentially barley. Um, you can make it with Canadian whiskey, which is how they would have made a Manhattan drink prohibition. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because I don't personally like Canadian whiskey. Um, 
Yeah, I, uh, I really like them. Uh, another variation that I would say that is kind of interesting that we won't be doing tonight, but I do enjoy. Um, just like I was saying with the maraschino liqueur, um, take a very heavily peated scotch and just float half a bar spoon of very heavily peated scotch on top of the cocktail. And that'll give you that lovely smokiness, but you won't get the bitterness of the smoke because there's only, you know, a quarter of an ounce in the drink. Or, sorry, quarter of a teaspoon in the drink, not a quarter of an ounce. Um, and you do get the aroma and the flavor, but you don't get the bitterness. And that's also something that I like to do with the uh, martinis. Oh yeah. Just coat the glass with scotch, with a really peaty scotch, and then build your martini on top of that. Oh, that sounds right. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, Stuart says his spin is Glendronic 12 single malt with Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez sherry. So I'm not crazy for using sherry in the cocktail at all. So I like that. Uh, the PX would basically take the place of the sweet vermouth, and the Oloroso would take the place of the dry. Uh, and you end up with something very balanced. I do apologize for everybody who thinks that we are going too fast. We are trying to make, you know, four cocktails, including variations, in an hour. So we're trying to make them 15 minutes apiece so that we're done in 60 minutes. Uh, and, you know, we're kind of making it up as we go along as well. So you all know what you signed up for. Um, yeah. I am about ready to move on to the next, uh, which is going to be the Negroni. Now, this was probably the first grown-up cocktail I ever encountered. Uh, it was probably the first one I started ordering in bars, which is when I learned very quickly that uh, about five years ago, ten years ago, uh, bars in Lethbridge didn't stock Campari, uh, and that the red vermouth that you got was usually about 15 years old, uh, and that it was usually on a dusty shelf that they'd never touched forever. Um, you, oh, Kevin wants to know more about vermouths. Uh, let's talk about the ones in front of us, because we do have three. We have the two that everyone has, and then we have Punti Mess. Um, we'll cover Punti Mess a little tiny bit, because uh, they did already talk about it. Like I said, it means point and a half. Um, it is by far the most bitter and perhaps the most strongly flavored of all the vermouths we have. Um, they're basically taking their Campari analog and adding it to two parts of what's already a pretty punchy, sweet red Italian vermouth. I don't think that in terms of aromatics, like straight up neat, this is not as complex, it is not as interesting as Carpano Antica formula. When we first started selling this product, we could only get it in giant one liter bottles that were like $65, $70 for a vermouth. And even with that, it sold fairly well. Uh, they are now coming in half bottles for $20, which is a much more economical and fast selling size. Uh, but for a very long time, uh, when you read, you know, cocktail blogs and talked to people about vermouth, Carpano Antica formula was just considered the standard. And if you weren't using at least that, um, you were a fool with your red vermouth. It's, I think, the reference red these days. I personally like sherry-based vermouths. Uh, Gonzales by Ass makes one that's really, really nice in a red vermouth, but they're not the same as the classic Italians. Digging into that a little further, you have classic Italian vermouth, there is also French vermouth, and then you have Spanish, but Italians are usually the ones that most bartenders will reach back to. What vermouth ultimately is, is a lightly or very mildly uh, fortified wine. Uh, alcohol on these are sitting at 16.5, 17, 17 18.5 on this guy, and this guy? Did you happen to notice? I didn't. 16. Now, when you consider that, like, a bottle of standard table wine is somewhere between 13.5% and 14.5% and alcohol. These are fortified. They do have some distilled spirits added to them, but not very darn much. And then what else is added to them are a whole bunch of botanicals. You've got spices and herbs and nuts, uh, usually some sort of uh, serious bittering component, very often shinoto, which is an Italian type of bitter orange peel. Um, but one of the things that I always say is like vermouth is something that it's a wine base. It's 16% alcohol. It's not going to last three years in your cabinet. It's going to go off just like a bottle of wine would. The big problem that I find a lot of people have is, you know, they want to go go and make a martini at home. If you're dragging out a bottle of, you know, martini white vermouth that's three label changes ago, it's going to taste like gasoline because that's what your vermouth tastes like. Vermouth goes off surprisingly quickly, and you need a really, really steady hand of just making sure it's fresh enough. One of the things I really like about Carpano is that it does come in the smaller bottles. Because I'll be honest, I could drink this straight. I don't really want to particularly. I could, but I don't think I drink enough actual white vermouth to go through an entire 750 ml of this before it goes bad. Um, what I have seen is people will take the vermouth because it has such a low alcohol. Uh, if their freezer is set fairly cold, you can pour this into ice cube trays and actually freeze one ounce ice cubes of vermouth, and it will actually keep that way. 
Or, so, or just simply refrigerating it, which is not something that, that most people do. Yeah. yeah. I'll admit, even myself, I typically don't. Yeah, I keep my I vermouth in the fridge when I have it around. Yeah. I also rip through my vermouth pretty fast. And that's the other way. Is if you're not going to refrigerate it, just drink it quickly. Yeah. That's easy. All right. So I think we are at the point now where we should get into Negronis. Mike, can I throw it over to you for the classy Negroni? Sure. Uh, where am I? Oh, I need... I, None of well, this. You don't need any of that. No, I uh, completely screwed you over on no, that. No, that's okay. I need some gin. You do. I need some Campari. So for everyone at home, we are using gin, Campari, and the red vermouth for this one. So uh, this is one, uh, again, you can, you can build it in the cocktail glass over ice, uh, or you can mix it if you don't want the ice uh, uh, in mixed in, but we're going to build it in our actual glass over ice. So grab some ice, put it in your cocktail glass. And this is the easy one. Uh, no half measurements. It's just straight up one ounce of gin. One ounce of Campari. One ounce of sweet vermouth. We will still grab our stir, stir stick, spoon, fork, whatever you're using. Back of the chopstick, really just, you know, when you're just at home, it doesn't matter. Mix it up a little bit. And I believe we decided a wedge. I think we're going to do a wedge for this one. I think so, it looks nice perched on the side of the glass. Oh, shit. Put the link to the recipes up on the thing. Oh, and that's oh, why man. we want to go slower, right? That's why we want to go slower. So myself, I will still squeeze just a little bit of the orange into it and then perch the, perch the wedge uh, on the side of the glass. So I never want to scapegoat Aaron as much as it's my favorite thing on earth to do. Um, but Aaron was rather supposed to put a link to all the recipes in a PDF format that he's already made up into the comments. Yeah, he'd already spent like quite a bit of time making the thing um, so that everybody had a cocktail card at home so that they could follow along very easily without us having to reiterate the ingredients. That was a thing we thought of. Yeah. And our bad. Next time, uh, if there is a next time, uh, next time we do the cantankerous cocktails, we will provide the recipe cards in advance in and in the, the kits. boxes, yeah. um, uh, the kits that we sell. So, you know, first time jitters. We, yeah. we did our best for the first time. Now, I'm going to do a bit of a variation on mics, and this is something that you actually kind of came across, and it turns out it's a real thing, uh, mm. and that's adding a dash of Prosecco to your Negroni. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing Mike did, one, one, and one. And then I'm going to top dress mine with a little tiny bit of Prosecco. How's your Negroni there, Mike? It's, it's great. I love Negronis. Like I said, it was the first like grown-up cocktail I ever enjoyed. I still order them on the regular whenever I find some place that I trust that their mouth isn't five years old and been kept next to the fridge so that it's, you know, baked hot. Um, I love them. They're just so bright and fresh. They taste like summertime. I do think the citrus is an absolute requirement. You want that bright, fresh orange character. Uh, very often when I have orange bitters, I'll actually rim my glass for a Negroni with orange bitters so I get that bright, fresh orange oil with every single sip. Uh, the other way you can kind of simulate that is to actually take your orange wedge and bend it backwards, and you'll actually express the oils. Not if you do that. And you'll actually express the oils from the skin, and you actually rub orange oil from the back of the skin onto the outside of your glass. I'm going to give mine actually a good proper squeeze because I like a lot of orange in my Negroni. And on your phone. And on my phone. Yep, there's quite a bit of orange juice on my phone. Uh, and then I'll give it a stir first so that I don't wreck the carbonation on the Prosecco. And then I'm going to top with a little bit of Prosecco, probably only an ounce at most, just to give it a tiny bit of fizz. And this is just a little bit of a variation that gives it just a dash sparkle just a dash of difference and also lightens up the alcohol a little bit because let's be fair we're mixing booze with booze with booze here there's there's no like mix it's just booze all the way down mm. you know what i don't love sweetness but i still love negronis yeah. even an absolute classic one yes please
you know what? I actually would rather the standard without the Prosecco. I think the Prosecco just dilutes it a bit. I think I like the classic. The upside with the Prosecco, and like that's how... I mean, I discovered it. I didn't discover it. Um, I had a bottle of Prosecco in my fridge, uh, and uh, I went to put a bottle of cider in there, and uh, there was no room. Uh, but realized the Prosecco I bought uh, for Mother's Day to make uh, mimosas. So it was three weeks old. And typically, I would just throw that out, and I recommend it to my wife that, like, it's done. It doesn't taste bad, but it's not right. And I walked away, and she stumbled across this and, and made a drink and used that leftover Prosecco that was three weeks old in the fridge, and it reinvented it. It was... you could use it rather than just, just dumping it out. Um, it made it drinkable again. I don't know why I I'll thought I'll give it the that... benefit for that. I don't know why I thought that more Prosecco would fix the drink that I didn't like the Prosecco <laughs> in it, but just more Prosecco. <laughs> actually, oddly enough, that, that actually... No, no, really it, it was meant to be more topped up, almost like the Americano. Okay. When we touched when that. We get there, so, yeah. like, more than an ounce, but... Um, Michelle says, this is better than anyone I've had in an ingredient, uh, or in a restaurant, pardon me. Like Mike said at the very beginning, ingredients matter. What did we use? We didn't use a desperately expensive gin. Um, for any of you who've heard me proselytize about Beef Eater 24 before, I'm sorry, I'm going to do it again. Um, this is like $31.95 on the shelf. It's a buck or two more than Beefy, uh, than Bombay Sapphire or Tanqueray. It's 45% alcohol. It uses fresh botanicals. I know everybody's like, oh, well, I like $55 botanical gins. No, if you're making cocktails, this stupid overproof beef eater, it just rules. It's got such a giant um, juniper punch. And that overproof gin, again, when you're diluting with ice, that gin needs to be able to stand up to big ingredients like Campari, like red vermouth. Uh, and then, like I'll keep harping on about restaurants, sorry to anyone who owns a restaurant who's watching this, I'm completely shitting on you. Um, Let's be fair. I've never seen a restaurant that served Carpano Antica formula as the red vermouth in-house because it's $20 a half bottle and normally vermouth's like $12 a liter. Um, there's a reason why you've never had a Negroni quite like this in a restaurant and it's just, at least down here, that would have to be like an $11 Negroni, which a lot of people aren't willing to pay for. You know, and I mentioned before at the beginning of the segment how I've never liked a martini until I changed up the vermouths. Every martini I've had was that eleven dollar vermouth. I mean, it's it's. You know, I'll use them like the martini, martini and martini rosso. Yeah. It's it's what's around. It's what most people use. But damn, does it destroy drinks? Um, and it wasn't until I moved to the Dolan. Um, I forget who recommended it, but someone was like, "Oh, you should try it with that." And I'm like, "I don't like vermouth, so I don't care." Um, but I finally bought it, and I'm like, "Damn, I like martinis now." Um, it, it, it was a complete game changer, changing up the vermouth by itself. None of the other drinks, or the other alcohols. Okay. You want a drink here? Awkward. Yeah. yeah. What do you want? Aaron does. Beautiful. Um, I will also say that, uh, you know, continuing to rip on martini, I'll say one good thing about martini and one absolutely damning thing about martini. On the plus side, Martini White Vermouth, the only actual vermouth company that sells small sizes of a dry vermouth. The only one on earth, so if you're worried about your vermouth going off, Martini Dry White, is it great? No, but it comes in a smaller size so it doesn't automatically go off on you and you don't end up throwing it out. I will give them that in their credit. On the absolutely damning side, they bought, so Dolan that we were talking about, it's a French vermouth. And like I said, French vermouths tend to be a little more subtle, they tend to be a little more delicate. There used to be a French vermouth that came in a liter that was only like $19. It was called Noily Pratt. It was like Dolan, but much, much cheaper, like half the price. What happened? Martini bought Noily Pratt and then decided, hey, you know what's fun? Not having competitors on store shelves. They just ripped all of it off of store shelves in North America, so you can't get Noily Pratt. So giant double uh, middle finger to you, Martini, for that. You destroyed the best value white vermouth on the market, full stop, and that's not acceptable. What do you want? You never told me. Oh, uh... Um... Negroni? Because that's what I just decided I'm making you. Yep. You get what you get, Aaron. Yep. Give that.
Oh, and Paige comes in with a great idea. Uh, extra vermouth, use it in risotto. Mm. Oh, that'd be brilliant. I do a lot of cooking. Um, with vermouth? Uh, it's also really good for uh, uh, like mushroom sauces, like really oh, yeah. light based mushroom sauces, uh, white sauces. Well, you'd uh, use a Riesling normally. Uh, yeah. yeah or, use, or use brandy or use cognac. I mean, like it, it works in with all of that sort of stuff. Even just as a deglazing liquid. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. And again, it's like we said at the start, this is all about creating your own flair. Like if you just had a Negroni, you're like, man, that was too sweet. Well, there's our old friend Dry Sherry that we discovered making the Manhattan. You think that's too sweet? Why don't you take half the red vermouth out and add half Dry Sherry? Or say, well, that takes too much of the red vermouth out and just use Punti Mess, which will dial up the Campari. Um, there's so many things you can do. And then that's without dipping into bitters. Now we're not... We're going to get into bitters a little bit with the Boulevardier cocktail, but there's two problems with covering bitters extensively on this. One, uh, for any of you who don't know, bitters in Canada, if you buy them from a Canadian supplier, are absolutely ludicrously expensive. Uh, I, for absolute ever, have been gray marketing in my bitters out of the U.S., uh, driving them through the Sweetgrass border crossing and just having them shipped from upstate New York into Sweetgrass and then just driving across and doing the customs myself. Because they get my bitters for about one third what they would cost to buy them in Canada, which is why our bitters are so much cheaper than everyone else's. Um, I can't do that with COVID. That's why our bitter selection right now sucks. Uh, it really sucks. We actually just got in a new aromatic and a new orange, actually from Wildlife Distillery uh, out of, I can't remember if they're out of Banff or if they're out of Jasper. I want to say they're out of Banff. Um, but a new Alberta bitters. I uh, haven't tasted them yet, but like we are trying to find new bitter solutions. But I would have loved to give everybody like a little tiny bottle of bitters and everything else, but I can't even get them right now. So I do apologize for that. But we are going to cover bitters pretty heavily when we get to the Boulevardier, but we aren't quite there yet. We are, however, onto the cocktail you don't really measure, you make with feelings and love. Shut up, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is why I've never made one before. That's true. You don't, you're dead inside. That, that's absolutely the case. Um, so Mike can't make one of these because he doesn't have emotions, but I can. Uh, you are probably going to have to get us more ice, though, mind. I've just about lost no, I've got a empty. bucket beside me. Um, I do like this cocktail with a lot of ice. The Americana cocktail is kind of like a Negroni with less alcohol and with a little bit more sparkle. Um, to me, it's all about the way the drink looks in the glass. Um, you know, we currently have pot lights uh, that are LEDs. Ideally, this is a drink that you would have out in the sunshine, on a patio, on a beautiful day. And the drink should absolutely glow in the glass. It should be this almost luminescent red color. Now we're going to make this with, I believe we said half an ounce for this, or are we doing one ounce? No, we're doing full ounces. Good for us. We're going to do one ounce Campari, one ounce sweet red vermouth. Man, we are burning through the Campari tonight. I love it. You know, I noticed our bar towel is Campari. Thanks for bringing that, Mike. You're welcome. Um, Donnie, would you be an absolute lamb and grab us an extra bottle of Campari? Because I have a strong feeling we might just need that. Now, I actually added about three quarters of an ounce of red vermouth on this one, just because I want a very bright red cocktail. I don't want it to be brownish. I want it to be like electric red. Thank you, Donnie. Got that there for now. Um, nope. And then from this state, I'm just going to add a little bit of soda water. I want it to sparkle. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add a wheel of orange on top of the drink. And then I'm actually going to pour the soda through the orange wheel onto the drink. And I'm going to give that a very careful, cautious stir so I don't dump booze all over Aaron's expensive camera equipment, like some people. Um, I didn't spill booze on his No, he spilled it on his much more expensive computer. No, I, I, I spilled egg. egg. He spilled an egg. <laughs> that's, that's much better, yes. Um, now, I again, it's tough to tell with the lighting. You want it to absolutely be luminescent in sunlight, but this isn't sunlight, this is LED light. It's balanced for daylight. I want to say that's pretty close to the color I was hoping for. I think the Carpano's got a little too much more uh, brown in it. Run this through the back of it. You want to run that through the back? Let's see how that looks. 
this one. Actually, that's exactly the right. Look at that red. Look at that glorious carmine red just glow right through the drink. This should capture all the subtle delicacies of Campari and some of the subtle delicacies of the vermouth. If you're not getting a whole bunch of pretty Campari character, you've drowned it. You've added too much soda water. Do you still want that there, Aaron? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that still looks good. Yeah, okay. Um, you want this to give you all of the pretty characters and taste a little bit like bitter orange, but you don't want it to taste boozy. This is almost like having an Italian soda that happens to have a bit of booze in it. It should be light and refreshing and something that you can have how much club? I probably added two ounces, maybe an ounce and a half worth. It's not a whole lot. It's more than you would add of the Campari or the Vermouth, but it's not a lot more. And you want a lot of ice. This is the sort of drink that you want to be sitting on a patio and just enjoying. And you, as a result, you want a lot of ice for a hot day so that the drink stays icy, icy cold. Um, if you want a little more orange, you can certainly get it. You can kind of brush up your orange wheel there that's sitting on top. You can get a little more orange out of it. Mm. And that's just, to me, that's the sort of cocktail that I can order, and I can just sit on a patio, and I can order one after another, after another, after another, just all day and enjoy it thoroughly. The other option for this, if you like a little bit more orange, is to take your orange wedge and actually crush it into the drink to give yourself just that maximum orange goodness. That also works. And yes, I'm doing that entirely to yeah. annoy you. Yeah. I, I've been doing it from no. the start purely I to annoy you. I didn't notice it until just now. Yeah. That's okay. It's, doing... it's going to end up on your desk tomorrow. That's fair. Yeah, I, I completely understand that. Uh, would you like some soda for yours? Uh, well, no, actually, I got ahead of myself. Uh, I've never had an Americana before, okay. and, and it did intrigue me, uh, and I want to try it, but I also want to try it with something different. Um, so I picked up a can of Canada Dry Ginger Ale when I was next door. All right. Um, so I'm going to try it with that, uh, and my favorite is actually, uh, it's Cranberry Ginger Ale, um, which is only available during Christmas. That angers me. But uh, Kevin asked, what's this called again? It's called an Americano cocktail. Some people call it an Americano number one. Uh, there are a few different variants in the Americano. This is the closest thing to a classic variant. Before I drink this big. entire thing, because I love these, do you want to actually taste mine? <laughs> if you can get under the orange wheel, which, yeah, good call. That, that's a much smarter thing than what I did. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah, I will do that. And Lorraine, it's about equally as hectic on this side of the camera, I absolutely guarantee you. What okay. do you think of that? Uh, that was great. Let's try it with ginger ale. But I'm going to try it with ginger ale. And as I mentioned, I really like cranberry ginger ale. And the ginger ale is just floating on top, isn't it? It is a little bit. Well, I, I, got, I had to wedge that orange. That orange right in there, in there yeah. So we'll just stir it around a little bit. I actually think you got a better color on yours than I did on mine. That, that's that red you want. Cranberry and bitters. I've got some cranberry bitters just kicking around. Paige actually says that cranberry ginger ale is now available year round, which is uh, a only win in for the two everyone. liter bottles. Oh, and I don't need uh, a two and liter ginger ale. And that's my problem: is that as much as I love it, a two liter bottle goes flat far too soon. I prefer it just in the regular size cans. The vermouth of sodas. The vermouth sodas, yeah. Um, don't hey, get me wrong. I'll, humor. I'll still I'll still buy one every once in a while, but just it's not the same. I'm stealing some yeah, beers. Yeah, I'll go for it. I have no idea how this is gonna taste. Do we need to pull out the incandescent lights as well? No, no, you don't. I think you actually got a better color on yours, just full stop. I think you got a nicer look on that. It's too sweet for me. No, fair enough. The, it added some sweetness with the ginger ale, but... It this, would. This is... This is a great patio, actual, like, full sort of spritzer kind of cocktail. Everything else we've been doing is rather boozy-boozy. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. It's a little bit yeah. lighter. This is This is great. And that's why I like them, is they're very much the, you know, I can have two Negronis, and then, you know, if I have one more anything, I'm not driving anywhere. This, I can crush these all afternoon, and sure, I'm not driving, but I'm also not, you know, unable to walk and, you know, passing out in shrubberies and everything else. Sorry, I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> really, that's not the context of the whole event, but all right. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> two means? No, we'll, we'll just, it, yeah, it'll go dark really fast. <laughs> 
Now that's the first one I'm going to finish because that's that just suits me to a T. I love that combination of lightness, bitterness. You can add just a little more soda if you just want to stretch it out. That's the other thing I like about this is because a good red vermouth and Campari are so jam-packed with flavor. If you're kind of getting to the end of your cocktail and you're like, I don't really want to get up and make another one, just splash a little more soda in there. And is this going to be anywhere near as good as the first one ahead? No. But it's a damn sight better than just plain club soda. Um, Campari and red vermouth are very flavor-packed. This is still not great, but it's fine. This is a new favorite. Uh, still asks, uh, what brand of ginger ale? Because apparently some people are very particular. Oh, yes. No, there is a right answer. I, I say that there's no right or wrong answers to a lot of things. Yeah, she is. Because <laughs> I bitch about this all the time. <laughs> okay, so Canada Dry makes ginger ale. Sweps makes sugar water. Um, and it's, it's pretty... It's pretty clear what the difference is. If you want really sugary, sweet, fake ginger ale, then buy your Schweppes. Um, but if you want normal sweetness, real ginger ale, Canada Dry, that's where it's at. That that that's it. That's what are your what are your thoughts on Western Family? Uh, I mean, it's probably crap, but I, I'll probably admit crap, I've, but I've never actually had it. I'm right. I'm so I'm not particular with a lot of sodas, but I'm particular with my ginger ale. That's totally fair. You like that? You think that's gonna be a new this, this one in the great. rotation? I'll be making this a lot. Yeah, it's if not this with the soda water. I mean, I just like the idea of it. Yeah, it's kind of like an Italian soda with a little bit of booze to it. Well, yeah. well, actually, quite a lot of booze to it. Less really, of the but... quinoto bitter, and that's like I love Italian sodas to a certain extent, but like that that quinoto cola, bitter orange cola nut. It's, yeah, it's it's too much for me sometimes. Uh, 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 still loves it. Um, She's Italian. Maybe that's why. That's I, I don't really why. know. It's it's a little bit too too rough for me. But no, this is fantastic. Uh, so uh, what are we doing next week? Yes, we should probably talk about what's coming up next week. Thank you, Aaron. You're always welcome. good with the uh, always good with the notes. I was just thinking that I'm not going to bring them down off the shelf and put them on the counter because this is messy enough. Thank I can you. Clear space for you. Uh, no, I think this is fine. Everybody can kind of see. Aaron can zoom in oh, with his God. camera job. Uh, so Wednesday night, uh, we are going to have someone we don't know exactly who yet from Establishment Brewing. It might be Dave Ronneberg. Uh, it might be Mike Maxwell. It might be Natasha. It will be someone from that uh, brewery and they'll be joining us for four seasonals no core beers here uh we're gonna be doing the superfusion uh which they've made the last three summers running i believe which is their katharina sour with guava their left my wallet in el segundo in its second year which is their smoked salted sour with pineapple from germany style that's oh, really neat. What, what, what german style is that lechtenheiner <laughs> sure um, Gold Pass Life. Uh, Mike, you can, uh, oh, yeah. you can describe the style here. Uh, sorry, what's that? Uh, it's a Czech style, uh, Pilsner, isn't it? Oh, you dick. You read the English part. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the name is not in English. Um, and then finally, Marmalade Skies, Catherine is sour with apricot and orange zest. So, I mean, you know me, you know I love, uh, establishment. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, Friday night. I did not expect to be going back to South Africa this soon. I thought I was done for a little while. And then Eberhard Tam came down with his magical little traveling case full of super awesome South African wine that I wasn't expecting to buy. And if anyone has ever tried to sell me wine, if Holly or Corey or any of our winers are actually watching that know me as like the incredibly curmudgeonly dick that never buys anything, Eberhard like poured me 10 things and he sold us nine of them. Um, and most of it was from South Africa. Uh, so we're gonna be tasting the Neil Ellis Syrah, which we're gonna have a big case stack of next to the till if it's not all there already. That's gonna be our like, pork ribs, steak off the barbecue, like 1995 fun wine for the summer this year, because it absolutely rules. It's like an Australian Shiraz, but dialed back to the point where I actually really like it. Sorry, Dad. Uh, then we have from Lothian Vineyards, we have the Riesling. I mean, surprise, surprise, it's me liking a Riesling, uh, but that absolutely rules. You get that South African terroir, you get that really pretty smoke, and then you get the Riesling characteristic on top. They also have a Mourvedre Rosé called Isabel. I really wish we could get more of this. I think we've got already, which is about five cases, all we're going to get for the year because basically between me and Willow Park, we literally bought everything Everhard brought in. Why? Because this rosé absolutely rules. It's not funky. It's not different. It's not challenging. It's just bright and fresh and spritzy and wonderful and just every day. And then finally, maybe at long last, um, kind of like Arthur finding their grail, 
we finally get a Merlot at like 20 bucks I don't absolutely despise. This is by Mirandola Estate. This is something we actually imported ourselves, largely because it was part of my quest for the perfect Merlot. It's actually a very pretty Merlot, a little higher alcohol maybe than I would have ideally wanted, but it's still very, very good. So we're going to ask Everhart. Actually, we asked Everhart earlier today. He hasn't got back to us yet. Uh, I'm hoping he'll be joining us, but those are $80 for the tasting, and that is coming right up. Uh, let us roll on to our last drink, the Boulevardier. And yeah, thank you. Sorry, thank you, Eric. Sorry. Oh, right. Well, your your notes are I have chicken vague trash. at yeah. best. Yeah. Lots of brackets and points. And atrocious third grade penmanship. Yes. Holy Jesus. <laughs> okay, so are you going to thank Eric then? I am going to thank Eric. Thank you very much, Eric, for the uh, for the art for the Cantankerous Cocktails uh, entry uh, that Aaron then adapted a little tiny bit, well, more than a bit, uh, and we now have a beautiful, beautiful opening sequence that. I think wonderfully sums up kind of our personal dynamic of the last 10 years plus we've known each other. Uh, it's, it's closer to uh, 16. 16 years. 2005 is when I moved here. This 2005 is when I first started working here. God, it feels like so much more. Yeah. Uh, it does. I hate you so much, Mike. <laughs> um, so let's uh, let's move on to the Boulevardier now that everything is super awkward. Actually, before we start, I, I, I have a question. Yeah. So... Um, We've 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 talked a lot about uh, uh, we're finally bringing you cantankerous cocktails. We shot this segment, blah blah blah. Are we ever going to air it? Yeah, the other one. Which one? The other. The one? only cantankerous, yeah. like the the pre-record that we did when I made pisco sours last year. I thought that was already on air. That's nope. never been never, never been uh, never been showcased. Really? That's what started this whole thing. We didn't have an and we never segment. actually aired it. it. Took a year to animate it. <laughs> No shit. Seriously. Okay. Uh, well, then, yes, we obviously need to get that out there. I, I genuinely thought that it had actually been aired already. No. Nope. I had no idea. Okay. Nope, that is genuinely a left hand doesn't know what the right hand's it's doing situation. Pisco sour. Uh, pisco like, sour. That would be great. Too. It was. Yeah. I'm like, I love pisco sours. Aaron had to buy a new computer because of that segment. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> oh. All right. Give me some space. Okay. Boulevardiers. Uh, um, basically, a very interesting Negroni. Um, we're going to be doing it just, oh, I find shit. that the I bullet, need the we need the bourbon just to be a little bit more present. I've got one here. But uh, I've got a couple drinks on the okay. go, so. Nice. Uh, so I'll introduce the Boulevardier here. Um, it's basically a Negroni using bourbon. You could say it's a twist on the classic whiskey sour. You could take it as an American twist, uh, or sorry, an American whiskey twist on the Negroni. Um, it's just a classic whiskey cocktail. Not that dissimilar from Manhattan. It's just a little tiny bit different and i find a little bit drier a little less sweet and a little spicier especially and this is the thing with boulevardiers you really want to introduce the bitters and mike happily has oh. my favorite bitters i don't actually even oh, own right uh dylan's wormwood bitters you don't sell this in the store um i got to try this a little earlier today can you grab me that and glass Wormwood, of course, is the uh, the active ingredient behind absinthe. A lot of very old recipes for boulevardiers actually do have a floater of absinthe on top of the drink. So if you do have uh, a little bit of absinthe at home, bar spoonful of absinthe, just float it on top. Totally okay. So let's jump in here. We are going to start with one and a quarter ounces of bourbon. Pardon me, one and a half of bourbon. Where's my head today? Apparently nowhere good. So one and a half of bourbon. And then we're going to go one ounce each of Campari and red sweet vermouth. Are we right out of the... There we, yeah, we're gonna totally going to need the other one. That's not going to get me very far. Well, you know what? If anyone from Campari is watching, we could use a sponsorship because we sold a lot of Campari out of this bloody tasting. And no, no, I, I realize now that no one had seen the Pisco Sour one. I genuinely thought that had gone to air. I did. It apparently never did. That's fine. Well, if it ever happens, you folks are in for a treat. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a one of my time. favorite favorite drinks, period. Once I convince Kyle to actually bring in a drinkable Pisco. Oh, yeah, because that was a fight. Yeah, because good Pisco is really expensive, and it has done very well for us. But it was a, it was a bit of a road to actually get me to bring that in. So we got our one and a half bourbon to one ounce each of red vermouth and Campari. Basically building ourselves a slightly taller and slightly stronger Negroni. 
which I have no problem with any of that except with a whiskey base. Uh, for this, I am actually going to go the full orange, and I'm going to take the biggest chunk of orange wedge we have left, and I'm going to crush that right into the drink, because I like this with a lot of citrus. I'm going to throw it in the garbage to annoy Mike. Thank you. Uh, and then, let's give it a spin. So this, for me, is the ingredients that you guys have at home, plus a little bit of wormwood or absinthe bitters. I know, yeah. That just smells like coming home to me. Do -do -do. That's not that. I've also never had a Bavardia. No? Hell, I can't even pronounce the word half the time. That's and true. I know it's Boulevard e the, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I run into the same issue with this. I run into with a lot of things where it just sweet. ends up too sweet. Yeah. Um, so why don't you just use a little bit less... Uh, are bitter? you supposed to have extra left over? Yes, we rounded up on everything so that in case you were a little heavy-handed, you weren't left, you know, short on the final drink. That was a deliberate choice. Well, it was we also to make it a, easier for us doing the pours. That's, it sounds better my version. Yeah, I know. But yeah, uh, no, it was also the fact that pouring one ounce is a lot easier than pouring halves. But yeah, um, it's a bit of both. Most of the fact it's easier. Okay, so I don't think I have a variation for this. Well, I think we were going to talk about the variation of being the, the various opportunities for bitters. For bitters, and um, yes, and I'm I mean, going to use a, a bit different that bitter. Nobody That's has exactly what I'm using. Yeah. So as much as Kyle wants to complain about how hard it's been to get bitters, and he's completely right, our bitter selection is terrible. Absolutely but dreadful. you can make this stuff. I can't tell you how. But I have a very dear friend that makes her own bitters, or at least did it one time. And it is arguably the best aromatic bitters that I have ever had. So I am using the Tommy Gun Annie's Bitters nice. in-house, made by Lethbridge's own Nicole, who is probably watching. Hopefully. You'd think. You'd think, since we're using your bitters. Uh, sorry, Lorraine S. you didn't use your white vermouth. That was part of the perfect Manhattan. It was uh, uh, two teaspoons or half an ounce of the white vermouth, along with two teaspoons or half an ounce of the red vermouth, along with your one and a half ounces of bourbon. So it was part of the very first drink. Yeah, the dry vermouth was only used in the first cocktail. Oh my god, look at the puppy. Sorry, what? Sorry, there's a, there's a really cute puppy being carried around just, oh. just off camera. Sorry, I, I kind of lost it there. Ooh, puppy. He's really cute, though. He's tiny. He's got giant feet. It's too sweet. It's too sweet. Yep. Daniel okay, Kimpire. I'm actually going to go for the dry sherry, just because I know it works for everything. Um, this is always my kind of go-to of, oh, this cocktail's too sweet. I'm just going to add, like that much dry sherry to it and it will dry out the cocktail just because it will add so much salinity and salt that it will actually make the drink seem less sweet it's one of those like shorthand really easy things when i've i know i've already you know cocked it up but i've used expensive enough booze that i don't want to remake it you know but what what kyle and i just did there i think is the perfect example of what I wanted to showcase with this segment is creativity. Screw the recipe cards. Your taste is your taste. And if it's too sweet, change it. If it's too dry, change it. And it's literally that easy to do. Do dry it with the sherry, though. The sherry actually really adds a whole other dimension to that. Breadsticks are good. The breadsticks are very good. Also, thank you for Mike for like, putting Dip out like, a whole like, charcuterie thing. Oh my god. That's what the shot glass is. It's German hot mustard. Well, actually, it's just German mustard mustard. Yeah. What do you think of that with the sherry? Add salt. I, 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 it's it's too little in that little straw. Yeah, that's right. We need some thicker straws. When we when we did the one in the back, uh, for what it's worth, I really like the sherry in it, and, I, and that's something I never really would have thought of of using Sherry's as just, a vermouth substitute. It's just such a flavor punch and it's not ever really over the top flavor but it's very viscous it's got a really nice nuttiness it's got a lot of salt and it just balances things out um i know when i was going to um a couple of seafood places actually in daytona beach florida when my dad took me to the daytona 500 when i was like 16 um because he wanted to go um we actually went to like clam chowder places and they had like little tiny vials of fino sherry just to add to your soup because it brought up the flavor so much. And I've always kind of remembered that as like a, a dry sherry analog of like, it's just a flavor booster. It will add dryness. And I want to start adding salt. sherry to my shellfish. Yeah, it, it works okay. really well. 
So. Oh, and Kevin says the white vermouth actually helps dry out the uh, Boulevardier, so that's good. Mm. Uh, Don says she has Scrappy's Orange and Scrappy's Aromatic. Either of those would do. I think I'd go with the orange on this, or maybe even both. I, I like both. I I just like bitters. They're hyper concentrated flavor droplets that just change the entire balance of the drink. Um, when we have access to all of our bitters again, we are going to find a way to do one of these where we can give you a whole bunch of bitters to take home. Probably if I can figure out a way to do that. Um, but yeah, bitters are just such a incredibly powerful thing to add to your drinks. It's a shame that we can't get them right now. Okay, questions and comments and thoughts, folks. I know we're gonna have to wait ten seconds, but you want another drink? Yes, please. What do you want? Uh, and what did you just make? You made a uh, the Bouvardier is what we Bouvardier? made the last. Bouvardier. Yeah. Bouvardier. That's, that's, that's the Boston, Boston version. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, terrible joke. Uh, was, no, it was it was too perfect. Uh, sorry. You said it was, you the recipe is too sweet. It is too sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's too sweet. too sweet for me. Sure. I mean, maybe not so much for you, but I don't love sweet cocktails either. So well, dryer is great. Then yeah. you then you say that designation. Order your bartender around, and if your bartender has a problem, mm -hmm. order something better. Go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah, go no go somewhere else to a better bartender who knows how to make it right, or at least will listen to your tastes. Uh, so sorry. What do you want? I'll try a. I'll have a. Well. What do you think between the Americano and the Boulevardier? The Americano I have never had until we just filmed it. Yeah. I thought it was it was great. I'll and I thought it was American great with Donnie. a soda water yeah, or with the ginger ale. There you go. You're gonna have an Americano. I'll have a Boulevardier. Boulevardier? Yeah. I'm making. Do you Donnie. have a glass that I can uh, yeah. steal and just, rinse off? I, this one's probably fine. I well, I mean that's his glass. That's just. Oh, I know. I already rinsed off this one. Yeah, we're good. I get Donnie. What am I making? A Bavardier. You mean Boulevardier? I'm doing the American. What happened to my ice bucket? Oh, yeah, it's right there. It's absolutely it. lovely. What else? Well, I'm making drinks here. Please hit us with your questions, comments, what you thought, what you enjoyed, what you hated, what you thought was too dry, what you thought was too sweet, what you thought was kind of dumbed down and you didn't enjoy. Please let us know, because we do want to know. Because your you, thoughts will absolutely influence what we do next time, because we are definitely doing another Ken Or even that, cocktail. what you would like to see next time. That's the other side, is what would you like to see next time? What drinks? What drinks, what themes, what ideas? Oh yeah, and ratings. Ratings are good. Ooh. Ratings are good, we always want How ratings. do you rate something like this, though? Very carefully. Boulevardi Fumi comes in last, Americano second? Yeah. I'll say my variant of the Manhattan first for me. So Ma the dry Manhattan I made one, Americano two. Yeah, well, we, can't, we can't rank the, the variants because the, the our, our guests didn't taste those. I can. It's my bloody show. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, what the what the fuck was I doing? I don't know. You were making something for Aaron, I think. I think you were making Aaron a Boulevardier. Right. Um, bourbon. Rinse off. What would my uh, the Negroni? Uh, I don't know why it it hit me in the right way tonight. So that would be my my number one. Um, Negroni. They do. Uh, see, but like that's the thing. All these drinks are so situational. The Negroni hit me, but that Americano uh, with the ginger ale because I didn't really have the full one with that would have been my number two. I, I just I I just really liked it. Then the Manhattan, the Bavardier was my least favorite, and. It was still delicious. There is absolutely no reason for it. Rankings are very hard on this. Three, two, one, four. I see a lot of three at number one, which is nice. What was three? The, the Americana, the Americana. yeah. The, the no, most the Americana thing was we actually poured. Hey, it was actually in that cocktail book that I found, though. Which proves that you have a much better cocktail. That was actually yeah. I know. I was Americana I was impressed that that was there. That. There's also American Americano one and two. They had two variants in that particular book. And here's the best. Here's I think the best uh, comment of the night. Don says, "Well, number four was her second favorite, but she modified it a lot." Me too, Don. So did I. And if nothing here to your, was necessary to your taste, I hope you changed it up. I hope you kind of said, "You know, this would have been better if it was drier," and you added something that was less yeah. sweet, and, and you added a little more Campari if you thought it deserved it. 
And sorry, with that said, Aaron, Yo. you said you don't like sweet. Dryer. So yeah. I'm going to make a dryer. Yeah. Because we're doing the Bavardier. Thanks. There was one else. Donnie, you're a sweet. heck of a cocktail maker. What do you think of the Americana? It's, this is by far probably one of the, my favorite of the night. I've yeah. made, I don't know how many Negronis, Bavardiers. It's, it's, it's Boulevardier, you <laughs> Philistine. It's not that hard. Butcher it. Um, it's it's, I, it's got to sound fancy. Time, but this this is by far probably my favorite out of the four. Yeah. Like it, Negronis are usually like up there. I like to mix it up with the whiskey every once in a while. Um, but yeah, this this is tough to have it's, to, it, to that one. It's so easy and no one knows what they are anymore, which is so sad. I'm like the last person around who still likes them and I just I adore them. No, oh, I think we've found some f new fans today. I think we got some new fans. We are gonna now thoroughly annoy Lethbridge bartenders over the next two years asking for Americano coffee. Can I get an Americano? It's like, <laughs> what you want a cold coffee? It's cold coffee. It, it, it's, that's yeah, that's one of my I, favorite I, that's really coffee drinks too, is yeah. an Americano. Egg salad. Thank you. Cheers, yeah, I love those. That's that's honestly what I'm gonna make myself next year because there's still a little bit of orange left. Uh, <laughs> Michelle liked the Negroni best. Uh, Devin would just drink the Carpano Antica formula straight because it is delicious. It is. I mean, we didn't even talk about how good that is. I remember when it came in. And I was like, okay, sweet red vermouth. I need to find a new substitute. And I open it up 9 o'clock in the morning, and I'm taking a little taste. And it's like, you can drink this straight. It's it's a late-night aperitif um, easily. You drink it like a port. Ooh, we got somebody recommending a new muscatel. That could be very interesting. Uh, one point I did want to make about that, um, you know, hashtag ingredients here. Um... I hope everybody still has, because they used half of their one ounce of this Tauza Vermouth uh, to make their perfect Manhattan. And if they've used the other half to make another one, I don't blame you for that. But if you wanted to join me here, I'm going to have just the other half ounce here neat over a little bit of ice. Which is not neat. Neat would imply no ice. Never mind. Um, <laughs> neat story. Neat story. Yep. Cool story, bro. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we should probably shut the tasting down. <laughs> but I will point out, what do I get off this? I get lime, I get green apple from the Riesling, and this bottle's been open for about the better part of a week, and at room temperature, it's not been refrigerated. But it's it's fresh, and it's limes and apples, it smells like Australian Riesling. And then in the mouth, there's the spices, there's that little bit of orange rind, there's the... Uh, Aniseed, there's the fennel seed, there's the uh, cardamom pod, there's everything I like. And it's so bright and clean and fresh. And when you compare that to just martini white, mm, thanks. And this is an expensive thing. We sell this for like $22.95. Like it's not pricey, it's just good. Now, again, that's twice the price of martini. For white. what it's worth, you can't compare something that's really good to one of the worst things ever made. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's not fair. I mean, say that same thing compared to Dolan. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, you know, you, and like, you don't get me wrong. This is it's it. They're very different. I like the Dolan because it's versatile. This was so delicate and so pretty that you I could drown drink, this. Very I wouldn't easily. drink the Dolan by, my, by by itself. I would drink this by itself. And you could very easily drown this. This this would disappear if you hit it yeah. with too much other stuff. Yes. But it's really pretty. It is. It is really nice. By yeah, itself. I'm kind of surprised. One thing I've kind of noticed is. Um, the Manhattan and the Negroni uh, are finishing fairly low for a lot of people, considering those are by far the two most well-known cocktails we made. Um, I'm seeing like a lot of four and three is the top one and two, and that's by no means like universal. But the Manhattan and the Negroni, which are easily the most well-known cocktails we are making tonight, are finishing at the tail end of the rankings. Maybe that's just and the well weird known. stuff that most people don't know are finishing at the top. I think that's interesting. <laughs> All right, well, Aaron, should we wrap this thing up? I think we're kind of at the end of questions and comments that are useful and helpful. I think we are at the point where we should just wrap this thing up. Thank sure. you all, everyone, for joining us. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, Mike. You're um, welcome. It's taken us a long time to get to this, but we got there eventually. Yep. Did you have fun? Yeah.
Are you still I, nervous? I I, uh, no, I, I haven't been nervous for a while. Good. Yeah. I thought it was going to get I'm fine. still quiet. Sure, but that's just who you are, so that's fine. Yeah. Until the camera turns off. And, and then you're going to get really swearing about everything I did wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Mostly the oranges in the fucking garbage. <laughs> yep. I knew that was coming. And I will be fully cognizant that I did that entirely to annoy you. So, um, awesome. Thank you all so much for joining us. This was Cantankerous Cocktails Live, Volume 1. Uh, there will definitely be a Volume 2. I don't know exactly when that's going to be, because these are an absolutely ludicrously amount, amount of work to put together. Um, but we're going to do it again. Thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you join us next time. Good night. Yeah, good night. <laughs>